No one wants to be a lone wolf. That's just an excuse to cover up your fears around connection. In this edition of Thursday's Thought, I share my story about the isolation that can come with leadership and entrepreneurship. In this episode, you'll learn how to identify FAFs, aka fake-ass friends, the difference between Insta-famous friends and real community, the benefits of cultivating real community, and four ways that you can cultivate real community. Now, are you a conscious leader who is determined to rise together with community to move the planet forward? If so, I invite you to join me at the Activation Retreat this September. This is an intimate and profoundly transformational four-day retreat for leaders that will help you embody your mission, deepen your spiritual practice, and activate your voice and your gifts. Only 12 seats total. Apply at rubyframon.com forward slash activation retreat. Whether you're new to this podcast or you're a loyal podcast listener, please make sure you take a moment to download a bunch of episodes and drop a rating and review on iTunes. Now it is time to talk about the myths around being a lone wolf so you can begin to cultivate the real community that you seek. Welcome to today's Thought Leader, where I'm challenging you to rise up, speak up, and create a movement. I'm your host, Ruby Fremont, and I'm here as a catalyst for you, the new generation of thought leaders. Join me every week as I dive into raw and real conversations that will help you amplify your presence, influence, and impact. Hey, thought leaders. I'm back for another edition of Thursday's Thought. And this one is inspired by quite a few conversations that I've been having recently um, with people who have been interested in attending my activation retreat. Now, a lot of people love to come to things like this, like retreats or events or workshops, because it offers them an opportunity to connect with people. And most of these people consider themselves lone wolves or they tend to isolate themselves. And I'm not um, any different. Let me put that out there. (laughs) Let me just get one thing straight. I am not any different. I have a habit of isolating myself. And in my career as an entrepreneur, what I found is that and in my journey of personal growth, um, actually the, the synergy of the two, the personal growth and the entrepreneurial journey, I have found that it's become far too easy for me to isolate myself. It's become far too easy to tell myself shit like, well, I'm a lone wolf and I do better on my own and I can do this on my own. And that's all just bullshit. And I've learned this through my own, just my own personal journey, as well as um, diving deeper into a lot of these phone calls that I've been having and as well as work that I've done with my clients. I mean, let's get one thing straight. No one wants to be a lone wolf, okay? And if you're listening to this and you consider yourself someone who likes to be a lone wolf, I'm going to challenge you on that right now, okay? I challenge you on that. Are you actually truly someone who thrives, like thrives on being alone? Or do you simply settle for isolation and becoming a lone wolf because of your fears of connecting to people because they might hurt you or your fears of opening up to people because you don't want to be seen or perceived in a different way or your fears of being judged or your fears of not being liked or the walls that you've put up due to X, Y, and Z in your story, right? These are the real reasons why. These are the real reasons that lead human beings to create the excuse that they just like to be a lone wolf. They just do better on their own. And in the journey of of leadership, one thing has become so fucking clear. And it is that we are not here to rise as individuals. We are here to rise as a collective and every single leader that I have worked with and every single leader that I surround myself with feels the same, right? Feels that we're here to either raise consciousness of the planet, to move humanity forward, to help people step into their greatness. And that's great. And yet you want to try and do that on your own. There's something that doesn't align 
when you put it that way, right? Like we're all here, we're all leaders to try and move the people of this planet forward. We're here to help the, the population become greater. We're here to move the collective consciousness forward. And yet we want to do this on our own. That's fucked up. Like <laughs> that's not how this shit works. We rise by, by rising together. And human beings have always, always in our history and all time have always been clan-like mammals. Like we live in clans, that we live in family units. We live in, I mean, this goes all the way back to prehistoric times. We have always been documented as living in clan-like environments, family units. And this is why one of our innate needs Again, hitting up my best friend Maslow, um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. One of our one of our uh, greatest needs as human beings is the need for belonging. And so, to feed ourselves these stories that say things like, "Oh, I'm better in isolation," or "I do better in my own," or "I'm you know a lone wolf," bah! like that <laughs> that shit is is taking you away from your basic innate need, your basic human need to feel like you belong, to experience love and belonging from your community, from your tribe, from, from your people. And so this episode is really in service to you, to the lone wolf who secretly is actually yearning for community. I see you because I am you. And I see you because I've been where you're at. And there is another way. And if we are going to impact the planet, we need to do so by rising together. Okay? So one of the, the, the laws of growth that I like to teach a lot and have said a lot, and you've probably heard me say this before, is as you grow, you outgrow. So if you're listening to this podcast, you're most likely in the personal development industry, you consider yourself to be a thought leader or a leader, great, which means you've committed to your personal growth and your personal evolution, right? And what you've probably noticed is the more that you grow, the more you start to outgrow the people around you, whether it's family members, um, perhaps even your partners, your best friends, your circle of friends, your communities, you start to outgrow them. Because you start to value different things because you have now uncovered different things about yourself. So this process of outgrowing is completely and totally natural. But what a lot of people do as they start to outgrow is they start to create walls because outgrowing people can be tough. It can be emotionally taxing. It's hard to let go of friendships, even when you know that that friendship may not serve you in in a positive way anymore. It's hard. It's hard letting go of people because again, that rubs up against our basic human need to belong. And here we are pushing away or or cutting ties from our safe units that we've created, our friendship circles or our tribes or communities or families even. We're cutting those ties in order to continue growing. Like that shit is painful and yet it's necessary. And so what a lot of people do is they swap out that pain for a wall and then they go on this lone wolf status. Um, And then they start to seek out evidence that proves why they need to be a lone wolf. And I get it. When you're an entrepreneur, it's really easy to, like I said at the beginning, like it's really easy to isolate yourself. I mean, most of us work from home um, or in our home office and we don't have anyone around us. There's a lot of solopreneurs I know listening to this. What's up? I see you. I feel you. Maybe we have a VA. Maybe we have a digital team um, that isn't in our homes with us. Like it's really fucking easy. Our careers make it really easy for us to just be on our own. But it doesn't have to be that way. And um, Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, was one of the first, if not the first book to really talk about the power of the mastermind. And he talks about it as a mastermind, but really it's just about surrounding yourself with like minds at any point in your life. So, so as you grow, 
you outgrow and then you create new connections or you start to cultivate new connections or nurture the connections that feel good. Now we've all heard um, the quote, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Yes. And this is true because we're influenced by other people, whether it's um, we're influenced by their thoughts, their words, their actions, or their energy, right? Like if someone has just bad vibes or negative vibes, or if someone is jealous of your success, or if someone it just doesn't understand what, you, what you're up to and what you're doing because they're not an entrepreneur or they're not a leader and they're not putting themselves out there and then they judge you for it, like that's really yucky energy. And that can, that can, that impacts you. It impacts you. And so the people that you surround yourself have an influence on your energetic composition. The people that you surround yourself with also have an influence on your mind and your body and your soul because they can inspire you in ways or they can drag you down. They can inspire you to be greater. You can have incredible conversations with people and you can have gossipy conversations with people. There's a massive difference, right? Um, what's interesting is we still see that in the world of personal development. I did this post on, on this topic a, a long time ago. I feel like maybe it was a long time ago. I'm saying a long time ago as if it was like a decade ago. It was really probably a year and a half ago. Um, <laughs> but I did this post on how, oh, fuck it. Let me just share. When I first got into the personal development industry, I was very enamored by the people in personal development who had developed a lot of online fame, you know, the Insta famous people, the YouTubers, the, the people who had massive followings. And I was very enamored by that. And to me, I thought to myself, well, this is who I want to surround myself with. And I was really blessed very early on because of my network to be placed in the same rooms as the people, to be placed on the same stages as a lot of these people. And I can assure you it was amazing because that opened a lot of doors for sure. And what I discovered was that the personal development and leadership industry has now become the new level of stardom and fame. Meaning that, you know, move over Hollywood. Now it's all about the personal development people and what they're saying, what they're doing and who they're hanging out with. Like it, it very much became a cool kid's clique. And if I look back at my life, I've, you know, as a, as a child in elementary school and high school, I was always trying to be part of the cool kids. Always, always. Um, and I never was really. And in doing so, I would dismiss parts of myself or dismiss my truth just to try and fit in. And we're seeing that a lot. Like I'm seeing it. I'm witnessing it. I've experienced it firsthand in our industry where people are trying to fit in with the quote unquote perceived cool kids. And eventually everyone starts coming off the same in the online space, like everyone's kind of got the same personas and doing the same style of videos and doing all this shit. And it's like, wait, what, what's happening here? I thought we're supposed to surround ourselves with people who are, are meant to inspire us to be our greatest, not like the greatest version of, of this person's truth, you know? And it's, it's really interesting to witness, especially now that I've become aware of my behavior and what I was doing, you know, trying to be part of the cool kids and realizing at the end of the day, what I really craved, what I really craved was depth, was connection, was, sur I craved surrounding myself with people who really saw me for who I am, people who would never question me or my motives, people who respected me, people who honored me, and people who inspired me. And so I began to cut friendships and tighten my circle. And I remember 2018 was a massive year of solitude for me. It was a lot of endings of friendships, and I spent a lot of time alone. Part of it 
was me feeling sorry for myself. Oh, I'm just better off alone. Blah, 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 blah. Like it's that lone wolf shit that we feed ourselves. And then the other part of it was I really just needed to be alone because I needed to figure out what I wanted and what I needed because all of these connections that I was, um, and, and some of them I wasn't even cutting. It was just a, a gentle letting go or a natural letting go process. But it was painful because when you start to let go of people, you start to feel alone. And again, like no one wants to be alone. No one wants to feel alone. Um, we like to tell ourselves we like to be alone, but we don't really like to feel alone. So I went through all of that. And through that, throughout the year in 2018, I started to really pay attention to the ones who were there for me, the ones who really saw me, the ones who really got me, the ones who really, um, inspired me and honored me and I honored them and, and I, and I inspired them. Like it was eye opening to shift my gaze over to those people. And I began to nurture those relationships and I'm, you know, it's halfway or halfway through 2019. I can say this is the year where I felt I've never felt more connected to my community and it's taken work because I am one of those people who has put walls up and I am one of those people who has tried to people please and tried to conform in order to fit in with certain groups of people. And I'm just not in that place anymore in my life. So I'm not, hopefully some of this is resonating with you, pieces of it, I'm not sure, but um, really start looking at your life and the people that you've surrounded yourself with. and start to take inventory of what relationships still feel good and what relationships don't and then why it's really under, important to understand why they don't feel good or why they do feel good see we have in our industry the leadership industry the personal development industry the online industry there's a lot of fake ass friends okay there's a lot of faffs faffs for short f a f fake ass friends, um, takers, uh, people who are only supportive when they want to be, people who only show up when they want to show up when it benefits them in some way, um, people who view you as competition but don't actually admit it, uh, people who aren't willing to drop their ego to actually fully celebrate you and your successes, um, people who are just not willing to be real. Like there's a lot of that. And maybe, maybe if you're brave enough to admit it, you can admit that you've also been one of these things. You know, maybe there's been times when you haven't been able to fully celebrate the people around you because you're secretly jealous. You know, maybe, maybe there's times when you haven't been there for your friends because you really just wanted to fulfill your needs. You know, maybe there's been times when you've taken but not really given. And maybe you just haven't given because you don't feel worthy of giving or worthy of being the type of person to give. I don't know what it is, but you have to be able to look at yourself and be aware of all the ways that maybe you're contributing to this lone wolf status that you've claimed. See, in our industry as leaders, like I said, we're here to rise together. And the only way that we're really going to create a fucking dent in this planet is to do it together. It's through collaboration, not competition. It's through connection and not division. You see, there are some leaders out there that have placed themselves so high up on their fucking pedestals, claiming to be all about connection and unity. And yet by putting themselves on these pedestals, they are the ones creating the division. So be really cautious of, of who these people are, of if you have these people in your circle, if you're following them in, in your social media feeds, because that's energetic drain, energetically draining as well. Um, because what the world needs right now is connection and collaboration, not competition and division. So this isn't about, you know, back to the quote, you are the average of the five people who spend the most time with. When 
there's been like a lot of programs and courses or even events or seminars that will tell you, yeah, write down a, the list of, of names of people that you'd love to spend time with or people that you'd love to have dinner with or, or be in a group with, whatever it is. And people mostly gravitate towards naming uh, like Insta famous people, people have achieved some sort of like massive visibility or massive accolades or achievements. Um, and this isn't just about surrounding yourself with Insta famous people. And I'm not saying all Insta famous people are, are not real. I'm not saying that at all. Do not take it that way. But it's important that you dive beneath that because this is about surrounding yourself with real community, people who see you, people who value you, people who honor you. So there's a few benefits of cultivating real community. And I want to share them with you right now. So one of the benefits of cultivating real community is accountability. You have people in your corner supporting you, there for you, um, holding your vision up high for you when you forget, um, helping you stick to your journey, helping you through whatever obstacles come your way. There's accountability. Your community serves as a source of support. They serve as a source of inspiration. They serve as a source of belonging. And they serve as a source of understanding. So these are your people, the people who you feel understood around. Like these are the people who really, really fucking see you and know you. And then finally, your real community acts as a launch pad for new and greater opportunities. There's been so many opportunities that have come in my life. I mean, every single opportunity that has come in my career has been due to some sort of connection that I have created and nurtured, some sort of friendship. You know, earlier this year, I spoke at this incredible event called Elevate in Bali and that happened. And I had a, so much stage time. It was incredible. And I got that through my friendship with Joel Brown. And Joel Brown and I first connected at an event that we both spoke at, um, I think I want to say five years ago now. And we've just always nurtured our friendship. Joel has also introduced me to, you know, I've had clients come to me through Joel and vice versa. And so there's been opportunities that have come through that connection. And, you know, now my mentor, Gerard Adams, there's been a lot of opportunities that are starting to come my way because of that as well. I've had opportunities come my way from former coaches, from connections with amazing souls that I've made in masterminds that I've been a part of. I'm, I've gotten interview requests and podcast requests through friendships that I've made through group programs. I mean, it's been incredible. So real community really it acts as a launch pad for new and greater opportunities. When it's real community, when it's fake ass, fake ass friends, that doesn't happen, right? They want to keep all the opportunities themselves. They're not going to invite you to be part of something. I remember. Um, one person that I had put on a pedestal and they're, they're really well known. They had invited me to an event that they were speaking at and the person who was putting on the event was very, very well connected. And I was told that, you know, come to this event, come support me, please. Um, I'll introduce you to the event organizer, great contact for future speaking opportunities. I was like, great, cool. I bought my ticket. I didn't ask for a free pass. I bought my ticket. I cleared my schedule. I showed up and I stayed there. And the other friends in that clique didn't. They just did like drop bys and they were on the guest list. But I went for the whole time and I was never introduced to the event organizer. Um, in fact, the person that had invited me barely talked to me at all the whole time I was there. And maybe you've experienced something similar like this, and I want you to be cautious because this is not real community, right? Real community is going to be there for you. They're going to want success for you, and they're going to want to work like help you and support you in creating that for yourself, and you're going to want to help them and support them in creating that for themselves. So know the difference. I, of course, like it's so easy to say like know the difference, find real community, but I want to give you tips to help you do that, okay? So here's what I found that's worked um, in terms of cultivating real community. I mean, step number one, first off and first foremost, is to let go of any friendships that are draining you or depleting you in any way, or friendships that are no longer serving you in the direction that you want to move. 
So maybe these are friendships that you've been holding on um, for whatever reason, like maybe because you've just been friends with them for so long and you don't, you don't know what your life is like without them. And maybe you feel like there's not a good enough reason to let them go. But like all those phone calls that are fucking draining you, draining your energy where you have to smudge the shit out of yourself for like an hour after you get off the call, like that, is that really worth it? The friends who dump on you, who dump their shit on you constantly, the friends that don't believe in what you're doing or aren't willing to see what you're doing, the friends who don't really see the magic in the work that you're doing in this world, like is that, are these really friendships that you need to hang on to? Let that shit go, okay? Let that shit go. Number two is to take inventory now of your life and, and pay attention to the relationships and friendships that you do have that serve you, that energize you, that inspire you, that motivate you, that make you feel fucking amazing. And then list those names out and start to nurture those relationships. So yes, that means getting out of your lone wolf status, leaving your fucking home office, perhaps putting some real pants on and not just pajamas and getting together with these people so that you can continue to nurture these connections and nurture these relationships. Number three is to event, attend events and workshops. I can't tell you all how many times I've attended events or workshops just for that piece alone, just so I could connect with new people. Because what better place than to have a, a someone, the event organizer or host or creator, cultivate this like room of awesome people just like you. Like, well, great, the work's already done. Just show up, right? And you get to learn from it and grow from it because it's probably going to be an awesome event. So attend events and workshops and um, be really open when you attend them. Don't go with the intention to swap cards, like actually leave business cards at home. Um, if you still have business cards, if you don't have business cards, just don't fucking get them made because they're such a waste. Um, <laughs> but attend events and workshops, don't bring business cards and make an intention. So this is what I do. I'll create an intention with myself. It depends on the length of the event. If it's like a four-hour workshop, I'll say um, maybe one person. If it's like a three-day event, then I'll say like four or five people. But you say, I'm going to connect with a minimum of two people at this workshop. And you make that intention with yourself. And when I say connect, I mean deeply connect, like have lunch with them or have dinner with them or have breakfast with them. Um, get to know them. Get to know what, what more than just what they do too, okay? Uh, in fact, don't let that be one of the first questions. Um, one of the first questions I love, love, love to ask is like, what ex what's exciting in your life right now? Or what are you super passionate about in your life right now? And then talk about struggles. Talk about real shit. Get underneath the covers and get to know who these people are. I mean, this is how we create amazing connections. It's not through surface level conversations. So attend events and workshops with the intention to connect with people. And then number four is seek out masterminds or group programs where the community is created for you. Um, there was a mastermind that I was a part of and through that mastermind, it came at such an amazing point in my career too, because I felt I was still pretty new and I hadn't met a lot of people in that space except for the Insta famous people. And this mastermind opened my eyes to like a whole other group of people that may not have been super insta famous but were definitely fucking powerhouses um and i made some incredible incredible friendships through that mastermind i mean you can meet like your soul brothers and soul sisters through these kind of programs and again just like the events and workshops like the the community is curated for you so all you got to do is show up it's interesting cuz in our industry our accolades do matter. Um, I'd like to say they don't matter at all, but they do. Um, when you're building your business, if you're working a service-based business, like potential clients want to know what results you've had with clients. Um, people who want to book you to speak want to know what other stages you've spoken at. They want to, people want to know how many interviews, how many times you've been interviewed or what you've achieved in order to assess like how great they think you are because that's just the time and era that we live in. You know, social media makes it so, so easy for us to portray ourselves any which way. 
Like we can literally manipulate how we're being shown online. People are literally fucking lying. They're fucking lying about what they've accomplished. Okay. Like they're, there's people out there who say, oh, I made like $20,000 this month. Cool. Did you also tell them that the other 11 months of the year, you made maybe a thousand or 2000 only? Like there's a lot of shit that's happening that you're being told online that is fucking false or is only a half truth. And these are the people that you choose to surround yourself with. My invitation to you is to open your fucking eyes and look at where you're at in terms of community. Are you feeding yourself excuses to, to remain a lone wolf due to your fear of X, Y, Z? Are you surrounding yourself with <clears throat> Insta-famous people because of X, Y, Z? Again, you want to discover why you're doing these things. Are you resisting creating community because of X, Y, Z? Like really uncover the truth. Why don't you have the community that you really want to have? I'm so, so blessed and I, I feel emotional sharing this, um, especially because I just came out of a, last week and I just came out of a, another two night plant ceremony with um, my tribe and I had invited some of my other friends to join and it was just so, so beautiful. But it's, it feels so good to be in a place in my life where I know who my community is. I know who the people are who have my back. And, um, God, it just feels so fucking great. And I want that for you. I want, it's great to find people who have accomplished amazing things. And I want you to surround yourself with people who know who you are. I want you to surround yourself with people who, who know what fires you up. I want you to surround yourself with people who understand your traumas and your wounds. They see your struggles. They know your grit and they want to see you and they want to be seen around you because that is real community. So my invitation to you is to refuse to be a lone wolf. Let down your walls, get real with yourself and start to cultivate your community. Now, if you are a purpose-driven leader, which I'm assuming you are since you're listening to this podcast and you're seeking to create that strong community for yourself, while continuing to deepen your growth and accelerate your rise into leadership, I invite you to join me at the activation retreat. This is an intimate and super, super transformational four-day retreat for leaders that's going to help you embody your mission, deepen your spiritual practice, and activate your voice and your gifts. There are only 12 seats total, and at the time of recording this, there's only six seats that are still open. So if this calls to you, do not hesitate apply today. The link is in the bio. It's rubyframon.com forward slash activation dash retreat or head to my homepage, rubyframon.com and just click the tab at the top that says activation retreat. Thank you so much for joining me for another edition of Thursday's Thought on today's Thought Leader, where I'm challenging you to rise up, speak up and create a movement and create a community. If you dig this episode, please share it with a friend. Sharing is caring. Be sure to download a few episodes and drop a rating and review on iTunes. If you have anything to share or you had any insights on this episode, you have a story to share with me or you just want to say what's up, please reach out to me on social media. My handle is at I am Ruby. And again, if the retreat calls to you, you want to hang out in the forest with me for four days with me and 11 other fucking incredible epic thought leaders apply for the activation retreat today. I'll be back here on Monday for a brand new episode of today's thought leader.